Let's hack some Wi-Fi networks. What's the deal behind Wi-Fi hacking? Why do we need to bother actually? And is it really practical? Wi-Fi hacking is just one part of the offensive security or the red teaming part. I'm gonna outline this following diagram where I'm gonna explain why that matters. Now, usually, imagine that we have some kind of a target network we wanna breach out, attack, or hack. Now, before explaining anything, I have to do a quick disclaimer that everything inside this channel is only for demonstrational purposes, including this video. Now, from the outsider perspective, we have plenty of options to engage and attack with specific network or target. Now, the first option is by going with server side attacks. Now, this is not very practical in the red teaming part, especially if there are some monitors in place, I generally avoid doing that for the red team, but it's a way for getting in. So, for example, if you scan networks, scan services, and potentially find and exploit vulnerabilities, then you may land in into the network of the target. Now, again, this is a situationary because this might be hosted somewhere else, but in the end, you're gonna breach some networks. Now, the other kind of attack we can uh, do pretty much is the client side attacks. And this includes anything like phishing campaigns and attacking the clients themselves. And usually this gets us into the internal network and it gives us access. But now, what if this fails? Well, we have more options. And then one of these options is actually the Wi-Fi hacking. Now, I place Wi-Fi hacking next to physical security because sometimes they're bound. I mean, in order to hack Wi-Fi networks, you have to be, let's say, nearby the physical building or where the target is. So that's why I bundled this together, physical attacks or Wi-Fi, and this is just a way to get us in into a specific network. A lot of the times I see engagements in real, let's say systems, are the following segmentation. So when you breach out, let's say the Wi-Fi network and you compromise this network, let's make it red. Then for example, you maybe have the ability to reach out several more networks. And from these several more networks, you maybe can reach out the several networks which can be your let's say end objective so at the end it's a way for us to get in and it's something to not underestimate so if you have the ability to go close by to your targets well always go for it and how do we generally go for this kind of attacks on the one hand side we have some kind of a capture now and crack later attack scenario and on the other hand side we have the evil twin attack scenario and that's how we're gonna we're gonna discuss now now the first attack is practically very simple. So at the end it starts by us scanning the whole environment. And keep in mind that these Wi-Fi networks and routers are pretty much giving away a lot of signals. The first thing is to pretty much navigate and make a target. Because we may have different networks for different buildings, for different offices, which are not in scope. So of course the first practical step is to find our target. I'm pausing the video just to say massive thanks to all of my Patreon sponsors. If you also want to support my work, well, you can become a Patreon. By doing so, you're going to be added to internal tools, documentation, videos, and much more, which I think you can find handy. Thank you so much, and let's move on. Now, by finding the target, the second step is to narrow the scan. So, whenever we find the target, then we narrow the scan, we make it more specific to the target we want to attack, and then, pretty much, we do another scan with the attempt to capture handshake. Now, handshake is this process which happens whenever someone logs into a network. And then this handshake is established and the password is inside these packets. It's encrypted, but it's inside. So, having this in mind, the next step is to de-authenticate if there's clients on the network. Because we have many two options, one of the options is to wait for someone to log in, which is a thing. We may go back to the office where guys are expected to come and then some of them might connect to the Wi-Fi. That's, that's a possible scenario. But the authentication scenario is much better because if we have clients on the network, and keep in mind that Wi-Fi attacks cannot work if there are no clients inside. But if there are clients inside, we can simply de-authenticate them with, for a very short amount of time and then get the handshake whenever they, their device automatically connects back. And that's what we're doing here in step three. And then the step four is simple. We just offline crack it. We pass it to, let's say, GPU rigs, pass it to multiple credentials, uh, sorry, word this uh, with credentials, and uh, wait for a successful head. Yeah. So we already know about this attack. We're not going to go into details on how that's been done. I have some documentation outlined. So guys, keep me, keep your feedback 
into our video description whether or not you would enjoy to have such kind of documentation. If so, I can upload it to my blog post which is linked into our video description where you can pretty much go and see all the steps one by one with included screenshots. So if you think that can be useful to have kind of documentations about these attacks, hit me up in the chat, hit me up in Discord or in the description of this video in the comments so I can know to upload this if you find it useful. Now the second attack is generally, I can say, more smart, it's smarter and I think it's better. Now the second attack is targeting not exactly the Wi-Fi networks because in the first one we are actually attacking the Wi-Fi and we are relying it to have weak password we can crack. In theory, if the password of the uh, Wi-Fi network is strong enough, in theory we will not be able to crack it unless maybe we use a quantum computing, which I personally don't have. So in these cases, we maybe want to look into different aspects of Wi-Fi hacking. In this aspect is, again, a client-side attack, a phishing attack dedicated to ask clients or personal behind the clients for the password of the Wi-Fi. It work, works quite simple. So first thing is, again, the same uh, as the previous attack. The first, we need to pretty much map the nearby networks and make sure we target the right one. Again, guys, do not test any networks you don't have permission to. Do not go off the lines. Please test only systems that you have permission to. Doing otherwise may result in serious consequences. So all things here are for educational purposes. Now again, in the first step, we have to pick a target from all the surrounding Wi-Fi networks. After we pick a target, we then create a fake access point. Now imagine that the targeted network is called my network. And as soon as we create the fake access point, it's going to have the same name. Again, my network. It's important to have the same name because you're going to see in the next step why. Now imagine this network has like three clients, but that's not really important. Now on the next part, we launch more aggressive deauthentication attack. In the first scenario, we launch the deauthentication attack just so that the devices can connect back and we can get the handshake. But this time, we launch super aggressive deauthentication attack so that pretty much we DDoS the system. We leave the network without access. Having this condition, I can say, maybe gonna force, maybe gonna, gonna trick the users in the clients there to see your network, which is having the same name, and connect to it. When they connect to your network, they're gonna be asked for a portal where they can provide credentials for the network. And the tricky part is that this attack works when you capture a handshake already. Why? Because when they supply credits to your portal, they're going to be sent to you. And the two we're going to use are going to automatically validate those credentials. So when you have the handshake, they're going to pass the credentials and see if they're valid or not. And if they're not, they're going to just give the user error, hey, that's the wrong password. Please uh, submit the right one. Now, this can be used in scenarios where uh, you want to get the Wi-Fi password, or you can also modify these kind of scenarios for the case you want to directly inflict malware whenever someone enters your My Network profile. Now, let's see how that works in action. I'm pretty sure that you already know how to perform the first attack where you have to get the handshake and scan the network, the, perform the, the authentication attack, they receive the handshake, that's the standard, we're not going to go through that. But for sure, we're going to go for the next one, which is the Evil Twin attack. Now, for the Evil Twin attack, you may want to use Airgaden, that's one tool of choice. And you also may want to use Fluxion. Now, of course, for doing Wi-Fi attacks, you may want to have a dedicated Wi-Fi adapter. Because without a Wi-Fi adapter, these attacks are simply going to fail. Because you need a dedicated hardware capable of doing two things. First one is being monitor mode. And the second one is being packet injection. And the packet injection is used for that uh, the authentication attack and the better the hardware, uh, the less uh, internet they're going to have when you're doing the attack. Let's say it like that. Now, you may choose between different set of adapters. I have here an Ateros adapter with Ateros chipset. I also have an Alpha adapter, which we all know is quite good. But at the end, it's kind of uh, messy when it comes to drivers and you need to tweak it a little bit in order to make it work. So in order to make it simple for that specific video and demonstration purposes, I'm going to use the Ateros adapter. 
So now uh, I'm going to go to my Kali VM. I'm going to log in and I want to make sure that my device is connected and up and running. So I'm going to plug that thing into the USB port and now we need to forward it. I'm using a VMware workstation and it automatically detects the USB device and asks me whether or not I want to include it in my host machine or the VM. Now I can click connect to virtual machine, go to my VM and click all right. This is going to connect the USB directly into my VM instead of my real host machine. Now I can validate if that's the case and here I can do simply see I'm connected to a network. Now I can disconnect from the network because I don't uh, really need to do it. And pretty much here you can see the available networks which proves that our adapter works. You can also do it by typing IF config and seeing your adapter there. Or also IW config which is going to also display the mode the adapter is working. Now it's managed which means it's designed for its uh, normal use. Now we have several ways of actually doing that into monitor mode. You can use uh, let's say Airplay NG, but all the things we do, including network attacks, require a root. So first thing is to do minus I, become root, and then I can operate further on. Now, as mentioned, I can pretty much change the mode to monitor by doing Airmon NG, start, and the interface name, which in my case is a W0. So run that. It takes a while, that's fine. Now, if I go IW config again, you can see now the mode is monitor. And there you can see that I no longer can uh, access Wi-Fi networks. Perfect. I'm going to go to OPT. I'm going to go to Fluxion because I mentioned this is the better one for conducting evil twin attacks. Of course, if you guys research and have a tool which performs uh, that kind of attacks even better, make sure to drop them in the comment and also like this video if you think that's useful. Now, with that being said, I'm going to go to Fluxion and it's really easy, you have to just start the script which is Fluxion.sh. Now, if you do it first time, you have to run it with minus i to install all the dependencies, but I, I, I've already done it, so I'm just going to run the script itself, run it like that. Now, with that being said, you have pretty much two options of conducting attacks. We have option two for Handshake Snooper, the one I showcased with the air crack, this, that's our attack one scenario, and we have the first option which is captive portal which is our evil twin scenario so i'm going to choose that now here it's going to take a while but it's fine the first thing we need is a target right so that's why i'm going to click on one and this is going to scan all the networks around now keep in mind that this adapter is 2.4 gigahertz and if you want to attack 5 gigahertz networks you're going to need a 5 gigahertz adapter so of course it must be hardware compatible now you're going to see that screen with the targets, I can just press Ctrl C on it and they're going to be loaded there. So from here I can simply specify the ID of the target, which in that case is 2. So start it and then specify my adapter from which I want to choose and do the phishing attack. So do 1 and then I can do reset attack because I've already did some testing before the video. And now here I need to again choose my adapter for doing the access point or the fake AP. So click that, then we can choose the deauthentication method. I'm going to go with MDK4, even though AirPlay also works fine. And then here I'm going to go with the recommended option, one. I'm going to go with the first option, one. And I'm going to specify the handshake, which I've already captured, using again the following documentation for attack one. So I've already done that. I've already captured my, my handshake. We're not going to do it again. I'm sure you guys all know how to do it. But if you don't, I'm going to paste, as mentioned, if you need it, uh, that in my blog post, so you have a documentation for it. Now my handshake is inside the root folder. So if I do ls, there it is my handshake, it's always inside the cap file. So with that, I'm going to specify the row path to the handshake, which is inside my root folder. And there it is, it was read successfully. Now I can go with the whole path verification, that is the pretty much the last step. So this is how the last step of verification actually happens. So I'm going to go with the option two. And now the attack is almost ready to start. Now here, I will always go for SO certificate because this always makes it trustworthy. So go with one, click that, and then again, disconnect the first option. Now here we have chosen with a different kind of a port house, which you can use. And depending on your country, you maybe want to use some of these. And depending on the, let's say, 
vendor of the route you're attacking, you maybe want to also choose something from here. Now, since I'm using a TP-Link router, and you can also see the network name was TP-Link something guest, I'm gonna go with the TP-Link in English version, which is number 68. So I'm gonna run that. And now a lot of screens should start. All these screens are gonna have specific actions, like some of them gonna, are gonna host the access point, some of them gonna host the HTTP server, some of them gonna redirect anyone who access them to the captive portal, and some of them are gonna do in the, the authentication attack. I'm gonna choose my phone, and we're gonna try the same thing from both my uh, Noting phone and from my Windows PC, which you are seeing here. Now from the Noting phone, I'm gonna simply log in now to the network, which is uh, the fake one. You can see, if you pay close attention, you can see that the network has exactly the same name. So I can simply access to it, and you can see a lot of things happen. We have firmware update, which I'm gonna show again from the uh, laptop I'm streaming. And now I'm gonna type the password. When I do so, let's type a, a wrong password. When I do so, it's gonna do the, ver the validation part. And it's gonna say a wrong password. I don't know if you guys can see it. Now I'm gonna do the same thing from my PC because as soon as you type the right password, all these windows are cleared up, the network is re-established, and then everything looks fine, which is the idea of the attack. And there it is. So it's possible that uh, sometimes it might not work because maybe you're gonna have a firewall which actually prevented me from running this attack in the first place. So at the end, if you have firewall like Portmaster, it can save you for this kind of issues. But now I disabled the firewall just for testing purposes. You can see my IP address there is changed. Now this is the captive portal we have, which indeed looks fine, I can say. Now all these menus are not working at all. Here we have to agree to terms and conditions, and here we have to input our passphrases for the Wi-Fi network. I do QWERTY123, it's simply designed for my network because it's designed for demonstration purposes, and now we've typed the right password. With that action, the windows for the, uh, the authentication attacks, everything that happens is caused by, and the connection is restored, which means that now our internet is gone, but we can connect to the real network and pretty much mimic the restart router action, because usually that happens when you restart the router. Which I think is it looking fancy, it looks nice, and I'm happy how that goes. And on top of that, you can also see that it's doing DNS spoofing. So in the end, you can maybe extend on this kind of attack and perform custom DNS spoofing for things like Google, Brave, and so on, to, as mentioned again, inflict malware. Now, that was from my side. I want to say massive thanks. I hope that was useful. If that's the case, make sure to smash the like button and also subscribe to the channel. This helps me so much. And yeah, see you in the next one. If you have anything you want to see and any tutorial you want, to, you want me to do, well, drop it in the comment and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.